I'm really happy to have a talk with Maxime Shalikin. Maxime, thank you so much for your time talking about this wonderful piece which has been played before but will be played again in November music uh, or is played again for those who are watching this video is played again in November music nine, uh, 2021 wonderful piece nine cello players please tell us what was the cooperation and what is special about this piece yeah that's a couple of years ago I started this similar cycle and, and uh, uh, as, as, as you may remember, the, uh, already chapters with seven violins, eight saxophone players, and now it's a turn of nine uh, cello players. And I originally I wanted to do it as a pure nine cello uh, octet, and then the, there was a coincidence. Uh, we, we met Rob, and then uh, Rob met Maya, and so on. So they were different talks, and they wanted to cooperate all together. And somehow they they convinced me to to try to to do something about this cooperation as well. And uh, my idea was to if to use some additional instruments, then they should be next to a normal cello uh, octet, but controlled by the feet of the musicians, because then they can normally play their own stuff and control the pedals. And then it appeared not an easy task for Rob to create. Uh, uh, these instruments because uh, I think at the beginning he even didn't underst uh, understand how difficult it's gonna, going to be for him. Uh, but then when we get to the point of no return, uh, well, he had to deliver the stuff because I already had the music composed for, for almost not existed <coughs> instruments. So it was, uh, it was a kind of difficult process of composition from this side, but uh, exciting in the same way. Yeah. So that's very interesting. First was the idea, which was the idea of your series of uh, pieces for uh, groups of instruments, of groups of the same instruments, uh, like the, the two saxophone quartets uh, piece, for instance. And then the idea became broader, and then you wrote the music, and after that the instrument still had to be built. Uh, yeah, the, well, well, there was a no, the point of no return when, when Rob showed me uh, uh, first prototypes of the instruments and, and then I understood that there is a potential, uh, uh, okay. some, some kind of potential yeah. in it. So, yeah. And then, of course, he had to double, double and triple and so on them. Yeah. <clears throat> and it took a, quite a lot of time for him. So we got, uh, I think, the whole set of the instruments we got on the short of force rehearsal. Yeah. Only when we gather together. So, but uh, but it, it, it was interesting that in the middle of the piece, because I was going to him, to his studio all the time, to check the sounds and and to understand what I can do with that, what not to experiment there. And I, at the, at the certain point, I also understood in the piece that, for instance, the dynamic change of the instrument is not, is not as, as huge as I was thinking it mm -hmm. will be. So, for instance, the piano sound and the forte sound the, the, the difference is not so big okay. and, and, and I already composed one moment which, which uh, actually is, is, it consists a lot of crescendo and diminendi on this instrument and when we started to, to play it all through I unfortunately had to, had to just cut uh, this five minutes of music from, uh, from there because we, there was a huge drop in dynamic and, and mm -hmm. energy so there, there was these kind of things which were unexpected that didn't work, but a lot of things worked uh, like a like a plant. Okay. But in, in some moments, uh, I kind of made, um, for instance, if the ropes instrument is playing there, this chord instrument, I double it sometimes. And when I want an important harmony to be heard, I double it with the octet. So we make sure that this harmony is there. Yeah. Uh, if something happens with the instrument and so yeah. on, uh, so this kind of thing. So I had to, I have to rethink a little bit uh, more in a more practical way how to compose for this instrument. Yeah, yeah. Just to make things clear, right? There's nine cello players, nine cellos, and there's 25 instruments which were built by Rob. 24 instruments which are, how do you say, uh, played on by the eight cello players of the cello octet. Mm -hmm. and one instrument which is different from the other 24 which is played by Maya Friedman and there, those Rob van der Broek instruments are all played by foot pedals right? exactly yeah. yes. now there 
cello-like instruments. The 24 instruments are cello-like yeah. strings, yeah. which are bowed with a, yeah. a turning thing. Yeah, like, like ch- yeah, more or less like cello-like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are they um, just producing one tone, like a like a sort of a, a drone? No, there, there are three different types of instruments for the 24. There is one which is producing one tone, mm-hmm. low, like double bass tone, something like this. And another type is a chord instrument, which is higher, and it produ- can produce four tones at the same time, but always same tones, so you mm. cannot really change them. So you, you basically need, uh, I had to choose the scale for every instrument, and it stays for the whole piece. And another one is a, is a rolling instrument, which is kind of pizzicato uh, instruments, and it, it rolls, and, and the, t- the string touches the plectrum. Okay. And there are different strings, like different amounts of strings from seven till... I don't remember, 11, I think, and uh, the different instruments. And, and uh, yeah, they can produce quite a huge speed in there and uh, and also going super slow and super fast. Mm-hmm. But yeah. this is more like pizzicato sound. Yeah. And the yeah. Fifth, 25th instrument is the uh, is the instrument kind of a box, well, it's the dodecator in this case, but with the with the strings instead of walls. And and the, there is a ping pong ball inside jumps on this i think there were like 150 something strings okay uh, and the ping pong ball jumps inside inside the box. Uh, and yeah on the strings yeah. and makes a sound there yeah a, a sound which is coincidental which is you know you it is coincidental predict. yes yeah. it's it's one thing in the piece which is comp- all the, yeah and the, and the tuning there is random uh, mm. at all yeah. so it's complete chaos yeah it's complete chaos but you have composed something which sort of boxes in the chaos yes yes that, that's true because usually i don't like uh, uh, in my music the, the, the kind of random things mm-hmm. but recently uh, in some places especially in similar cycle i have some little moments when i al- allow it to be so something which is a bit uh, random mm-hmm. but of course in, in controlled frame so i know what kind of effect it will I mean, emotional effect, what it will bring into the piece approximately. Yeah. So this is very important for me because otherwise it's just, uh, just an effect. It does, I don't really care about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the piece has to be about or has to be structured in the way you want it to be structured. Uh, exactly. Well, not, not, not even I want it to be structured, but I try to understand what the, what the music material wants yeah. from, from me. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't think that we can control everything there are there are a lot of things which uh, uh, which come uncontrolled in the composition and sometimes even even like there is a certain melody appears and we think that we we make this melody but where does it come from this melody we don't I don't know either yeah. it's, it's it's a kind of uncontrollable moments and some, you're talking about some, a melody which is in in the in the notes yes yes sometimes you just cannot uh, Sometimes it just appears and then you just realize, oh, there is a melody, but where does it come from? I don't yeah. know myself. Okay. But then there are some moments which you can control more or less. Mm-hmm. And then again, something comes which is uncontrollable. So I like this combination of, uh, of things which, which can be under control or not. Yeah. Can you tell a bit about the musical material of the piece? It's called Severan, which has something to do with the Russian word for north, right? Yeah. Seven. North and, and, and Serenade, yeah, together. So it's kind of uh, Kalambur here. Uh, but yeah, the mu- musical material is, uh, what, what I was searching in this piece, uh, there was a huge breath. So I, I, I somehow ha- was searching for big, big waves. Like if you, if you, if you sail in, in the Eiselmeer, then you have little waves but they are quite impressive already, but they can change quite fast. Mm-hmm. But then you go to the big sea, the, the waves become it's really huge. And then the ocean, when I, when I see, I never been in the ocean, but I want to go. But when you see this huge, I would, don't want to be in there. But when you see this huge wave is coming, like, I don't know, like one wave is 20 seconds or something like this. It's, it, it, it is, that's what I was searching for. So there, there, I think you can, you can hear in this music, these huge waves. And then it comes down, and then again and again. So I was trying to to create the shape where different materials are going into one into each other very smoothly. Mm-hmm. So, but at the same time they are different. But also some some materials come back. 
but in, in a different shape as well. So as, as sm I try to make it as smooth as possible. Um, it, and it's not easy to perform for them, but they are doing it really good now. But at the beginning, I remember we had we had problems not not just to play the notes which are there, but the connection between the sections. That was the main problem. But now they already understand the how huge the wave should be and which uh, place it takes in the piece, mm. which which meaning does it have? Mm. And for them, it of course becomes more easier to to leave this uh, this time. Yeah. Yeah, it because, to be. Some, because sometimes there is nothing happening almost mm -hmm. in the piece. Like there is the, the chord is, is frozen and then these kind of music boxes they start to sound a bit and just a little bit and you don't know like it's one or two minutes happening this stuff and, and, and you become a little bit lost as a listener mm -hmm. there. And from this feeling of being lost, the wave takes you somewhere else. And, and sometimes also when I was making climax uh, my idea was to to make the climax which is going beyond the expectation of the listener so there is a huge climax of 15 15 minutes something like this or even longer and and then the the decay from the climax is around 10 minutes uh it's a huge diminution with the with the whales with the sound of whales there yeah um, how are those sounds made but also by the cello players no there is a tape Oh, there's a tape as well. Okay. There is a tape with the with uh, yeah with there there are three places with tape. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it, it it really the piece is like a sea with big waves and calm moments and but it's one long flow so to speak. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is it's kind of uh, I think it's kind of uh, uh, compressed uh, compressed uh, life in a sense so, or mm. or. At least a, a long adventure, mm. because yeah. you can you can hear you can hear different materials which are coming back sometimes, and they some of them are changing so much that you cannot recognize them, and some of them stay all almost unchangeable. Like yeah. we see in our life as well, some things are changing and some are staying the same. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it is an interesting polyphony in our life, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I think Todos Los Vegos was your previous piece with the eight saxophones was inspired by literature, by a book, right? Did you did you get any inspiration, so to speak, from real life experiences on the sea, sailing on the sea or something like that? Or was it really the instrument and the thing that Rob built and working together which was inspiring for this comp for this composition? Um, yeah, I think I think the I think uh, mostly because I started to compose piece when the instruments were, were not there yet mm -hmm. at all. So the first half of the piece, not half like twenty minutes of the piece, uh, they, they they don't use the instruments at all. And my idea was to to put them into the music so slowly that you that you hardly notice that they that they are additional instruments. So my inspiration was more, more, uh, more the music material by itself because, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say because I think the inspiration is a complex thing, which which doesn't appear at one moment because I think it's a collect collection of different things together and the sailing it might be one of them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there, there are sometimes more direct uh, examples of inspiration like I had, violin concerto uh, uh, I composed many years ago for five percussion players and one violin. And there, there I use um, white noise in between because there are different materials, and I want, didn't know how to connect them. And then we went to France uh, with the car, a friend of mine, and then she was she she asked me to to be busy with the radio, mm -hmm. and the radio was not catching at one point. There was a lot of white noise in between, and then after that a different music. So I thought uh, this is an interesting concept for the violin concerto. You have the white noise, and then suddenly different music. So it was that was an inspiration. It was clear, but here it's it, it it's not so clear because uh, you <coughs> sometimes you go so deep <coughs> into development of the material itself, the musical material, that you don't really care mm -hmm. about uh, other stuff. But I I remember the feeling because I hardly have some kind of visual uh, examples in in uh, in my life about the music. But with this one, I had the feeling that. I'm like a free diver, you know, the free divers which are going without any equipment, mm -hmm. dive deep. And that was an interesting feeling that I 
I'm kind of going under the water very, very slowly and discovering different pressure on myself. And then suddenly you, you, uh, there is a certain, I think I was thinking like why are people doing this? But I think when they reach the bottom, they feel a certain freedom that they cannot reach uh, any other um, uh, point in their life. And they go back again and again because of that. So that was, that kind of feeling I, I had, and it, I think this piece was kind of a gift to me that like because I was feeling a total freedom when I was uh, composing it. it. It rarely happens when you when you compose music. Usually, you feel a little bit in the in like you are in the cage, uh, at least at some moments in the piece. But with this one, I ne I never had it. Yeah, yeah. So in fact, the composing process is something which really looks like, so to speak how the piece in the end is sounding, how it has become. Even the process is a kind of of wave, so to speak. As well, yes. Yeah. Because this this piece I composed almost, uh, almost the whole piece I composed uh, with a straight line, like mm. from the beginning till the end. Yeah. Well, the, no, not really true, but there, there were some moments which of course I, I put in and then at the beginning appeared later and so on. So there are some co compositions which, composition moment which came back. But uh, at some pieces like Letters to Anna, I remember this, that, that was the disaster, that was a huge puzzle. And I composed it uh, like in sections and it, it was not clear what, what should be where. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was really a painful piece to compose, mm -hmm. uh, just to compare. And this one was a kind of a relief. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it happens sometimes yeah. in the composition process. Yeah. Maybe just one more thing. In, in the explanation of the piece in the program, in the November music program, and also, I believe, in the Dag de Branding program. Um, it, it is referring to East and West in terms of musical material. Is that something which indeed is present in the piece, which you I, chose deliberately? I, I don't know. It's, I think it's something from the application to FPK. I, I don't really think about this. Mm. I, I, I don't think in these terms. No. I think in, in I am sure that there is connection between East and West because I, I, I was born in one culture and now I live in completely different culture. And I feel that that culture which I lived in affected me and now this culture it affects me as well. Yeah. So there is a connection for sure. Uh, there is no doubt. But in which way? I don't know. But sometimes I think also that my music sounds like Japanese music or even, even more than... Uh, Ukrainian or Dutch, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have some pieces which I, I honestly think that this music should 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 be born in Japan. Oh, really? But at least I want to think like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that something to do with Zen Buddhism? Or, no, I or... just like Japan very All much. Right. And, and I like literature and, and films from the, from, from them yeah. and, and uh, history and, and visual art and everything. Yeah. So that's that's my passion. And, and uh, I think it also does affect my music and, in a way. A bit, yeah. but it, it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. for because for the listener when when we listen we I think we don't uh, even think about this kind of which culture it does it come from. Of course, there are some very clear examples when the composer is quoting something or, or something like this. I'm making a piece now for Michel Moranc, which is called Capricious of the World. It's for the clarinet and ele electronic, and and there is every movement is dedicated to a different country. And of course, then you, you can think like, yeah, he's using the folk and so on, so on. And then how how I in interpret it. But uh, in this case, I think it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just much more than this connection, I think. Yeah, yeah. Recently, I saw the name of the movie about Matisse, which is about his his um, latest uh, girlfriend, Linda, I think. Oh, no, not Linda, maybe Linda, I don't remember. And, and uh, this movie is called More Than Love Itself. I think like this is an interesting title because this, is, this tells a lot about the person who is uh, making the title because maybe he doesn't know what love is. So it's, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, thing to consider. But for the listeners, I think this, the most important, at least for me, that they get an impression and they change and music something change in their mind. Yeah, the music is mu more than music itself. Well, it depends also how you consider the music, because for me, music is the most important thing in life, more than more than literature, films, and and religious, and and it, it everything. It, I think it's the unique 
key to to peace in the world. But mm -hmm. uh, people still don't understand it because they consider music mostly as an entertainment, which if uh, which if also can be, mm -hmm. but not only. Yeah. Do you hope this piece will to will will help to achieve this peace in the world? It, would it be possible? Oh, I don't. I, I don't have uh, these ideas. No, yeah. I, uh, I I don't think so. Yesterday we had concerts in uh, concert in Leiden, and there were 50 people or something like this. Um, mm. I am not sure. No young people at all. Mm. But if 50 people listen to your music, yeah. and they get it, and they go home and they have a peaceful feeling. That's you true. Know? Yes. No. But for for a certain, per I believe I truly believe that sometimes. Concerts. That's why I'm so serious about all concerts which I make and every every piece I make. That that every concert is there is a possibility that someone will come and it will change this person forever. Mm -hmm. I truly believe uh, in it, and and I have I had these moments in my life as well with uh, with uh, other composers or filmmakers or whatever. And this this art still stays in my heart. Uh, although, for instance, like Tarkovsky, I was watching when I was, I don't know, 18, 17, and it, this, this movie I haven't watched for uh, years, but it still stays in my heart. Yeah. And it yeah. does change me a lot. Yeah, and the same can happen with music as well. Yeah, for sure, yeah, it does happen a lot as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maxime. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Nice Thank you. Thank you.